Hello hockey fans and welcome back to another video. The 2022 Winter Olympic Games is set to begin in just a few months time, and though hundreds of NHL players are expected to represent their countries in the men's hockey competition, much of the recent conversation regarding the event has surrounded the tournament's hosts instead. Since the Olympic Games will be held in Beijing, China, the International Ice Hockey Federation granted the Chinese national hockey team an automatic place at the competition back in 2018. But considering that China has never competed in the Olympic hockey tournament before, and given that their national program is currently ranked 32nd overall in the world, there are a number of legitimate concerns as to whether the Chinese team will be completely humiliated on the international stage, let alone whether they even deserve a place at the tournament. After all, China are in the same group as Canada, America and Germany, and their last international competition was in the fourth tier of the World Championships back in 2019. They don't stand a chance against the juggernauts of the sport. Now in order to give themselves the best chance to compete and play at a higher level than their 32nd overall ranking, China has allowed the naturalization of foreign import players since their last trip to the World Championships. This means that the country has spent the last few seasons recruiting a plethora of skaters from North America in the hopes of making them eligible to play for their national squad in time for the Winter Olympics, while bolstering their team with an experienced and talented foreign backbone that will help them hold their own against their highly talented contemporaries. During this time, these import players have suited up for China's only KHL side turned national proxy team known as Kunlun Red Star. But despite the huge number of overseas players that Kunlun have been fielding, the team hasn't found much success against their predominantly Russian competition. Given that China could be removed from the tournament they are hosting, and given that Kunlun were recently examined by IIHF officials during a pair of games featuring their full national roster, I figured that it would be worth taking a closer look at Kunlun's current lineup in order to understand why many people believe they will be completely embarrassed at the Olympics, why they might be removed from the competition altogether, and why it might be the best move for almost everyone involved. So in today's video, let's explore why the Chinese Olympic hockey team is a complete mess. Let us begin with a brief overview of Kunlun Red Star's organization and their journey from China's first KHL franchise to their national team's proxy squad. Founded in early 2016, Kunlun Red Star was officially accepted into the KHL on June 25th of that same year and began play during the following 16-17 KHL season. Though the team spent its first three seasons playing at home in Beijing, the Chinese side was relocated to Russia during the 2019-20 season and has spent the past two and a half years playing in the suburbs of Moscow due to China being the origin of the current global pandemic and the travel restrictions that have been or were put in place because of it. With the team standing no chance of competing against their Russian opponents, since the level of hockey in China is of a much lower quality than their European counterparts, in an attempt to make Kunlun more competitive straight from the get-go, the league created guidelines that required Red Star have a combination of at least 10 players of Russian and or Chinese nationality on their roster. Not only did this allow Kunlun to combine notable Russian talent with the best players that the Chinese system had to offer, it also meant that the team could acquire a large number of foreign import players who had been drafted by an NHL team, had played a notable amount of time in the show, or who had spent much of their careers in some of the strongest leagues across the hockey world. Despite these attempts to even the playing field, and despite Kunlun having signed a number of NHL alumni or former draft picks over the years, the team hasn't found much success on the ice. During their first five seasons in the KHL, Kunlun has finished no higher than fifth place in their division, has made the playoffs just once in that span during their debut year, and has posted a 106, 156 and 38 record in 300 regular season games. The team hasn't registered a single winning season and is well under 500 over half a decade into their existence. To make matters even worse, their performance during the current season of play hasn't been that much better either. Icing a roster that is expected to represent China at the Olympics, 
Kunlun currently sits 11th place in the KHL's Eastern Conference with an 8-19-3 record in their first 30 regular season games at the time of this recording. I think it's fair to say that the team has faced plenty of struggles since their inception, don't you? So who is playing for Kunlun this season, and why is the team so bad? Surely there must be some notable names on the roster if they're going to be representing China at the Winter Olympics, right? Well, Red Star recently played a pair of games with the complete lineup that they hope will suit up for China early next year. So let's take a look at every member of this team and see the talent, or lack thereof, that they have mustered. Wearing the C on his jersey as the captain of the team and probably the most recognisable player on the roster is number 18, Brandon Yip. A Canadian Chinese dual national, Yip was an 8th round pick in the 2004 draft and played 174 NHL games, split between the Colorado Avalanche, the Nashville Predators and the Phoenix Coyotes, scoring 29 goals and 56 points in that span. The 36-year-old forward is currently in his fourth season with Kunlun, his third as captain, and has scored 9 goals and 16 points in 29 KHL games so far this season. Moving on to the first of China's two alternate captains now, we have number 64, Victor Bartley. A Canadian-Chinese dual national, Bartley went unselected in the draft, but ended up playing 121 NHL games, split between the Nashville Predators and the Montreal Canadiens, where he scored a single goal and 23 points for his efforts. The 33-year-old blue liner is in his third season with Kunlun, and has currently scored two points in 22 KHL games this season. Wearing the other A on his jersey is number 5, Ryan Sprawl. A Canadian-born, 2011 second-round draft pick, Sprawl played 44 NHL games, split between the Detroit Red Wings and the New York Rangers, scoring two goals and 12 points in that span. The 28-year-old blue liner is currently in his third season with Kunlun, where he has scored three goals and 11 points in 30 games so far this season. Next up, we have the starting netminder of the team, a role which belongs to number 45, Jeremy Smith. An American-born goaltender, Smith was a 2007 second-round draft pick and played 10 NHL games all with the Colorado Avalanche, where he posted a 1-6-1 record, a 3.54 goals against average, and a .888 save percentage for his efforts. The 32-year-old is in his third season with Red Star and has currently posted a 4-11-1 record, a 3.72 goals against average, and a .894 save percentage in 17 KHL games so far this season. While we're on the subject of goaltenders, China's backup job shall belong to Paris O'Brien, a 21-year-old Canadian-born netminder of Chinese heritage, who has spent his entire career in Kunlun system, but has yet to play a single KHL game this season, while the third-string job has been given to Peng Fei Han, a 32-year-old Chinese-born goalie who has spent his entire career back home, and also has yet to play a game for Kunlun so far this season. Alongside Bartley and Sprawl, China's blue line shall also feature number 7, Jake Chelios. The son of former NHL star Chris Chelios, Jake is an American-born defenseman who was left undrafted, but played five NHL games all with the Detroit Red Wings and went scoreless in that span. The 30-year-old is currently in his third season with Kunlun, where he has scored two goals and six points in 30 KHL games so far this season. The most experienced player at the KHL level on this roster is number 60, Denis Osipov. A Russian-born defenseman, Osipov has spent almost the entirety of his pro career back home in the KHL, where he has scored 22 goals and 66 points in 385 regular season games at the time of this recording. He also won the 2016 Gagarin Cup as a member of Metalurg Magnitogorsk, which makes him the only player on the team to have won the award. The 34-year-old is in his third season with Kunlun, where he has gone scoreless in 13 games so far this season. Rounding out the team's eight-man defensive core, we have 28-year-old Zach Yun, a Canadian of Chinese descent and a fourth-round pick in the 2011 draft, currently in his fourth season with Kunlun, 
Ty Schultz, a 24-year-old Canadian in his second year in China, as well as Jason Fram, a 26-year-old Canadian in his third season with Kunlun, and Ruinen Yan, a 20-year-old Chinese-born player in his third season as a member of Kunlun's organization. Amongst the team's forwards, the most productive player on the team is number 15, Spencer Fu. A Canadian born of Chinese descent, Fu played in four NHL games all with the Calgary Flames and scored a pair of goals in the process. The 27 year old is in his third season with Kunlun and currently leads the entire team in scoring with nine goals and 22 points in 30 KHL games this season. Moving on to another experienced forward, we have number 61, Ethan Werrick. A Canadian born player who was selected in the second round of the 2009 draft, Werrick spent three years in the OHL and seven seasons in the AHL before moving to China. The 30 year old is in his third season with Kunlun, where he has scored two goals and 10 points in 28 games so far this season. Another notable forward on China's roster is number 10, Josh Nichols. A Canadian born forward who was taken in the seventh round of the 2010 draft, Nichols played five seasons in the WHL, four in the ECHL and two overseas before finally moving to China. The 29 year old is in his fourth season with Kunlun, where he has scored four goals and 14 points in 30 KHL games so far this year. The most recent player on China's roster to be selected at the NHL entry draft is number 22, Parker Fu. A Canadian born forward of Chinese descent, who was a fifth round pick in 2017, Fu spent a number of years in the AJHL and the NCAA before finally moving to China. The 23 year old and younger brother of fellow Kunlun forward Spencer Fu is in his second season with Red Star, where he has scored four goals and eight points in 17 games so far this season. The rest of China's forward core is comprised of Tyler Wong, a 25 year old Canadian of Chinese descent in his third season with Kunlun, Lucas Lockhart, a 29 year old Canadian Chinese dual national in his fifth season with Red Star, and Mikhail Abramov, a 22 year old Russian in his first season with Kunlun. Not only that, there is also Corey Kane, a 31 year old American Chinese dual national in his fifth season with Kunlun, Alex Reich, a 25 year old Canadian in his third season with Red Star, and Zesun Zhang, a 24 year old Chinese born forward currently in his fourth season with Kunlun's organization. So the Chinese national hockey team, a roster set to compete against NHL caliber juggernauts like Canada and America, currently features 17 different players who were born in North America, nine of which are either Chinese dual nationals or of Chinese descent, has seven former selections at the NHL entry draft and has played a grand total of 354 NHL games, almost 300 of which have come from two players alone. Sure, the roster has amassed over 3,000 KHL games and over 2,000 AHL games between them, but you can see why the IIHF might be a little bit worried about their upcoming performance at the Olympics. In fact, the IIHF has been so concerned about China being humiliated on the international stage that the Federation sent a number of its officials to watch a pair of Kunlun's recent KHL games. Told to evaluate the status of the team's preparations and determine whether the roster is strong enough to compete at the tournament, IIHF officials watched Kunlun force a 5-4 overtime loss against Amur Habarovsk this past Monday after trailing 4-0 midway through the second period, as well as a 4-1 loss to the reigning Gagarin Cup champions Avangard Omsk this past Wednesday. Not exactly the results the IIHF wanted to see, but at least they managed to salvage a point I guess. Despite their losses against a mediocre Amur team and a talented avant-garde side being nothing in comparison to their upcoming Olympic opponents, Kunlun head coach Ivano Zanata believes that his team proved that they can meet the Olympic standard, as he claimed that his side were equal to the likes of middling international teams like Norway or Denmark, while his roster's character and ability should earn them the right to compete in the competition that they are hosting. 
While the IIHF awarded China a place in the tournament back in 2018, and the Federation have previously claimed that they wouldn't seek to remove teams from the competition, their newly appointed president recently stated that the Federation have placed the Norwegian national team on standby to potentially replace China should the IIHF deem that their team is too weak to compete. That said, Norway, the highest ranked national team that didn't qualify for the Olympics, likely wouldn't fare much better than China, since they also have minimal NHL talent of their own. However, Norway are the 11th ranked nation across the entire world, which is far better than the 32nd ranked China. Interestingly, Canadian news outlet CBC recently requested to speak with Kunlun's Canadian players to get their thoughts on the whole situation, and though they were granted permission to speak with them, they were told not to ask anything about the Olympics. That said, the players themselves brought up the subject, saying that the chance to compete in the Olympics for the Chinese national team was the ultimate goal that they were all striving towards. Though their on-ice play has been questionable at best and downright abysmal at worst, China's national team still have a number of question marks surrounding the eligibility of its players. While KHL records indicate that Kunlun has 19 players of Chinese nationality, and while several more could become naturalized in time for the Olympics, the IIHF has refused to confirm which Kunlun players shall be eligible to represent China at the event. After all, the Federation's rules state that a player must have competed in their new country for two consecutive seasons in order to become eligible for their national team. And while playing for Kunlun in the KHL does count towards this mandate, a handful of Red Stars players on that national roster haven't quite done so, either because they have recently joined the team over the last year or two, or they didn't play hockey during the prior 2021 season due to the global pandemic, and they hadn't played consecutive seasons in China prior to their year off. That said, one insider suggests that the Federation will have no choice but to grant these North American players a place on China's roster, since, quote, it's not like you are drafting a McDavid or a Crosby. However, the primary issue regarding eligibility for the Chinese national team surrounds Chinese passports and Chinese citizenship. Since China doesn't recognize dual citizens, if the foreign import players wish to obtain a Chinese passport and become eligible for the national team, they may be required to forfeit their Canadian or American passports, albeit temporarily. I don't know about you folks, but I'm not so sure the import players on the roster would be willing to go that far just to play at the Olympics for a team that will likely get demolished every single game. But maybe that's just me. So where does this leave us? Well, according to recent reports, the IIHF will decide whether to keep China in the competition or replace them with Norway later this week on November 25th. If you ask me, as much as it would suck for Kunlun's players to lose their spot just a few months before the tournament, and as horrifying as it would be to watch Canada or America attempt to set new world records against the tournament's hosts, I think the IIHF should let Norway take China's place and allow them to compete in the Olympics instead. Sure, Norway aren't exactly a hockey powerhouse either, and they could just as easily face huge blowout losses to the juggernauts of the sport, but at least they stand more of a chance to keep the games close, or maybe even pull off a surprise upset win. After all, there's a pretty huge difference between 32nd and 11th in the world, especially in a sport like hockey. Whether China ends up taking part in the competition or not, one thing's for sure. While adding import players will certainly raise the talent level of their roster and make them more competitive on the international stage, the Chinese program still has a long way to go before it finds itself at the Olympics on merit rather than circumstance. And that was a look at why the Chinese Olympic hockey team is a complete mess. What do you guys think about China's roster? Do you think they should compete at the Olympics, or do you think Norway should take their place instead? Let me know in the comments below, I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching guys, I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye!
A big thank you to Drew Fawcett, Houston NG, and Worthless Pieces for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com/oddmanrush and become a patron today.